What is going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. We have a lot to talk about today. As we know, the uh, the, the maintenance for the 14.0 update is going to be happening today. As of the recording of this video, I'm recording at 9am. Uh, it's going to be going up at 12.30pm, so in a few hours as of the recording of this video, the maintenance is going to be happening. However, it looks like that they're preloading some data into the game and we can actually get some info in regards to some of the information about this update. Some of these new mechanics, more more really looking at the co-op quest related stuff just to get a bit more information so we know kind of what to expect when it does officially release of course once the data mine is complete and once uh you know we have the maintenance update like i'm sure we'll get a lot more information i, I don't know if they're going to give us any info through data mines for like the next upcoming batch because tomorrow i believe we're getting some more information on twitter We'll get a lot of more info as the days continue on. But let's just start off with this. Uh, shout out to Brandon, who has been data mining a bunch of stuff in the game. So the first thing is, is this co-op specials. And I believe, yeah, this co-op captains. So as we know, with the uh, with, with this game mode of co-op quest, uh, I believe it's like here somewhere that it's posted about... Um, co-op captains right so a unit gets access to the co-op captains and co-op specials which are like new mechanics specifically for uh co-op quest in general now i believe only the captain gets access to the captain and, and the uh and the special i'm not 100 percent sure that's how it works but it's very interesting where these characters are going to have slightly different abilities within the new game mode itself which I think is kind of fascinating, but at the same time, it is going to be really annoying where, like, one individual unit can have, you know, normal captain, special, etc. Then they've got their rumble kit, and then they've got co-op quest stuff, like co-op captain, co-op specials, whatever it is. I think it can be very convoluted for, like, a new player or even, like, a mid-level player that doesn't really, like, play a hell of a lot of treasure crews. Seeing all of this can definitely be overwhelming, so... It's going to take a while to get used to all this stuff, but let's just talk about what we have in hand here, right? So, um, we've got access to some, some crazy stuff in regards to, like, new co-op captains uh, and co-op specials. And also, like, the co-op specials and captains are going to be altered depending on what type of unit the character is in Pirate Rumble. So, you do see that they give a couple of different examples here where they've got Luffy as attacker, Law and Kidder defenders, recovery, support, debuff... And then Bal, I assume, is balance. Um, but this is other. So this is just referring to like mob characters and stuff. Like this is this is not really important. Um, there is no difference based on the character or rarity. So use the character you like when the character is 150. So when a character gets to level 150, they're going to get access to co-op captain, co-op special, etc. Or you can use a new individual item to get access to this. Now depending on what style they are in rumble is going to alter what special and captain effect that they have and this is interesting right because no matter what it is all attack units have the same captain and special i'm pretty sure well we'll go through it all right there's a lot to talk about so the co-op special this one here reduces one enemy's hp by 25 percent for all players heals the crew by 30 times characters recovery up to two times so it's overhealing uh, and then it also reduces the players, all players, buying into spare by two turns. So this might be a supporter or a recovery style unit, uh, as we talked about right here. So this is uh, a recovery or a supporter style, probably. Um, then we have this one, delays all enemies to three turns, reduces the duration of all beneficial effects on all enemies by one turn. So this could be like a debuffer style unit. Then we have this one which says, for all players, change all slots, including block into matching, reduces special charge by two, extends the duration of beneficial effects on the crew by two. So this is probably the supporter style unit. This is the recovery style unit. Then we have this one. For all players, reduce the duration of unfavorable status effect icons by two turns. It's very good. And heals all players for 80 times recovery. That could also be a recovery style unit, I guess. Then for all players, reduce damage taken by 90% for two turns and heals all players by 90 times recovery. That's a big heal, okay? Um, so this is definitely the defender. And then this was probably going to be the attacker, where 2 million damage to all enemies, ignoring everything, including normal attacks only. And then for all players, change type slots to character zone type, and then get minus 2 turns of cooldown. Okay, so you've got multiple different types of specials. So this is attack, this is a defender, uh, right here, this is defender. So this is probably the healing one, this is the supporter, this is the debuff, and then this is the balanced one. Okay, interesting. So you probably want a variety, but... 
it's going to be interesting to see how this actually works. Like, a character's special is going to actually just work normally in, in Quest as well. Like, if you've got a special that just says, like, I don't know, for example, like the new Vegapunk, where you activate two different buffs, you get them on your crew. Are those going to be active as well, or do they only want you to use these types of specials? A bit convoluted, right? Now, you've got the captain effects here, and they are also quite varying. They are the same captain effect, but just for different colors, right? So... You got one for strength, minus two turns of cooldown, six times attack to strength, 1.5 health, and then boost everyone else by 5.75 times attack with 1.25 times HP. So you've got all these captain effects are just solid captains. These cult ones that you will get activated on these characters, and they're just flat out straight mono color teams. Basically, you can use any one that you want, really but they give a bigger buff, a slightly bigger buff to the character of their type. So it makes me think if they're doing characters such as this, does this mean that like every piece of content that you go up against in co-op quest is going to be one set color? So like maybe one full quest is that everything is int. So you just want to build mono psi. Uh, or is like, if everything is like strength, you want to build mono quick. If they're going to do stuff like that, it's going to make the co-op quest much easier. We'll, we'll wait and see, of course. Um, they talk about co-op stats as well. So characters get... Um, more stats based on their level. Um, it says their class. Don't know exactly what this is referring to, but you got different classes which get m different types of stats. I assume that, like, you know, if this one has the highest defense, this might be classified as, like, the defender-style units. We'll see. Now, there is something else called uh, a co-op action, which they did talk about. Um, and this one here says it gives fighter resistance, driven resistance, free spirit shooter striker resistance it's it's a little bit weird i don't know why fighter is is signified here for these co-op actions because not every character is going to be a fighter uh okay no there's more okay that makes a lot more sense so it looks like the co-op quest uh the co-op actions in co-op quest are all just resistance debuffs and that's all that it is it just gives you more damage which i think is a good thing um you've got like mono class ones with 30 percent. are they all 30 percent? some of them are 20 percent for other characters okay i think this is a pretty good way of doing it so all these characters in cult quest they're not going to have super unique individual effects in this new game mode it's like a broad umbrella of like these general boosting effects and depending on the character's class or color is just going to give them buffs to those classes or colors like it's pretty straightforward it's just the fact that a lot of these characters just have slightly different effects to their normal effects that you get when you use them in other pieces of content so that's one component of this data mine that we talked about and that was a very small component of stuff that's been data mined here so brandon's also data mined some interesting stuff here where he talks about new skills now he says slot change impossible but the thing is is slot change impossible is already a thing in the game so i don't really know what he means by this it says nullifies effect to change to certain slots excluding cap ability effects the ignore slot change impossible okay so slot change impossible nullifies effect to change to certain slots so this is interesting it says certain slots so let's say if there's like a slot change impossible where it says you cannot change your slots into strength slots maybe that's what it's referring to but then there's this one here where it says slot change impossible is a debuff okay nullifies the effect to change to certain slots it's the exact same as the one above so i don't really exactly get what this is referring to we have the damage reduction limited times reduces damage taken by a certain value again like i don't know where this is coming from considering this is a skill that we already have in the game immunity to certain status effects we already know what this is limited number of boosts limit the number of boosts that can be applied to the crew when multiple effects are applied at once effects may apply over the limit excluding certain special effects so this is similar to like limit special uses but this is just straight up saying you can only have x amount of buffs on your crew at one given time this definitely is a new sort of gimmick debuff in the game um, this can really hinder the amount of damage that your team can do. So I'm, I'm kind of worried, but concerned to see where this is going to be applied to us. This could definitely be a problem. Now the luck stat. Uh, the luck stat is is a component that is in co-op quest, and we've talked about it briefly when we saw the initial data mine and stuff. Here's like a little bit of information about it here. So, during co-op quest, the higher your luck that you have, the better clear rewards that you will receive. And you can power up your luck with getting the character leveled up, 
uh, or you can power up with luck drops, which is a new thing that is going to be introduced into the game. It's just an item that increases your luck stat. And then you can also use duplicate characters from the same evolution tree in order to get that luck stat even higher. So for example, you've got like the six star plus Onami, but you can use the six star or the five star version of the character to increase the luck. Very similar to how you level up potential abilities with a character. Like if you've got, you know, six star, like legend gear five, right? You can level up his rush with the six star plus version of gear five for example like just giving you examples now depending on the luck of the character the amount of drops will change for every five levels of a character they will get plus one luck luck can also be raised via power up using materials characters from the same evolution tree if it's a legend character they get plus two so legends will inevitably get more luck due to them feeding more with their sugo rare um stature if they are just a rare character, which is like a gold poster, four star, five star character, uh, then they get plus one. Uh, this means if it's still a five star legend, it is still giving plus two. Just, you know, this is saying if it's not a legend, you're getting plus one. And then if you get the luck drop item, they also give you plus one. Rare characters are characters that offer 100 or more training points when you trade them in. The luck from the partner player in co-op quests will also apply to your drop type and amount. So this is interesting. If you partner up with someone else that has a very high luck stat, that does affect your drops as well. So that's very good to know. The maximum limit of luck is 100. So once you get your luck to level 100, you can't go any higher than that. But this is interesting because the fact that Sugo Rares are giving more luck stat to your character, it means pulling duplicates of characters are even more useful, uh, especially if they are good characters that you actually use in... Uh, co-op quest right um for sugo rare characters and rare characters using the applicable level limit break wanted poster will also apply the same amount of luck that is actually really cool so if you have these wanted posters and you want to increase your luck you can go ahead and use those as well because they basically count as duplicates right so that's cool i like that they have included wanted posters in this so wanted posters are, are actually becoming more valuable now which is a good thing now, Grand Feast, uh, we could talk about that as well. So, Grand Feast Sugo Fest is where you will be competing in the co-op quest to get these rainbow gems. Now, these rainbow gems are uh, colored for each of the seasons. So, we're starting off with the springtime one this time around, which is the green gem. And what they're saying is, is as you complete co-op quest and complete missions, you will be receiving green rainbow gems. These can only be used for that season's co-op quest. Uh, the Grand Feast Sugo Fest, should I say. When it's moved over to a new season, so once it goes into the summertime season, these green gems, are they become invalid, uh, and they do not carry over to the next springtime banner. Like, basically, when the season ends, you lose all of your gems, so you want to just use them all as much as you possibly can whenever you get them, and that's kind of how it works. Now, as you use these gems to pull on the Grand Feast Sugo Fest, you will get yourself, um, like, duplicates of characters uh, or, or legends and stuff like that, and then you can use those uh, for this new ranking system that they've talked about. So... Regarding the Grand Feast ranking, uh, details on how points are calculated based on the rarity and the category. So, you want to actually get some really good high-level characters. I mean, when the official uh, video came out, we got a bit more info in regards to this. So, the Grand Feast ranking, you're going to be obtaining Grand Feast points based on the rarity and category of the character. So, you see that in this example, they had 37,000 points from these characters that they pulled. Um, so, Sugo Rare characters are worth 7,000 points. The more legends you have, the more points you have. And I guess when you rank up against other people that have also done their pulls, the people with the higher amount of points actually get more rewards, and that's kind of how it works. Certain characters appearing from Grand Sugo Fest will have character bonus multipliers. The character with a bonus multiplier changes for each season. See the list for more details. Characters without a bonus multiplier are a one times point calculation. The amount of spent Grand Feast stones are just for the record and do not affect the ranking. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter how many you spend, you just have to get the best possible pulls. Ranking rewards and stock list characters cannot be claimed after the event period. Please claim all rewards before the end date on the notice. So once you have done your Grand Feast pulls, uh, you want to make sure you claim them before the end of the event otherwise you just miss out and you don't get any of those listed characters that you pulled for um when you do the pulls on the grand feast sugo you do not get the characters straight away you you get them towards the end of the event once the ranking has been determined if any malicious activity has been detected you will not be able to use grand feast sugo fest and you'll be removed 
and then there's the stock list so once you do your pulls you can actually stock five multi pulls worth of characters and that is what is used in the ranking stocked characters can be claimed at the end of the grand fee sugo once you've reached over the max limit uh, you will need to remove stock results to fit within the limit so if you've done five multis on your sixth pull you have to determine like what characters you remove to fit that sixth one in if you wanted to keep it for example if the event period ends while you have more than the maximum amount you will uh, it's going to discard um the latest pull um the latest one is discarded and then the grand fee sugo itself uh it says grand fee sugo fest uses content exclusive grand fee stones to pull you cannot use gems or friend points and you will not obtain sugo medals from the grand feast um you can only do 10 plus 1 pulls you cannot do single pulls once you reach all pull step bonus of 10 plus 1 grand fee sugo you will start from the first step bonus again okay so this is something that i was interested in is if is there's going to be step ups on the grand fee sugo fest uh, and it looks like that is going to be the case and once you reach the end of the step up it just resets back to the start so uh, it, it, it makes it interesting because this is what i was thinking i i, I had a an interesting idea of the fact that they're going to have exclusive characters in the grand fee sugo fest and the thing is is if you get really unlucky and you just never pull the character and then you just get, can never get the unit i guess but if they make it so that if you go to the guaranteed step of the grand fee sugo fest then yes you can just get the character guaranteed I assume that's what's going to be happening here. We'll, we'll, we'll see how it all works out. The Grand Fee Sugo Fest is held on the last month of the Co-op Quest season. It will not be held in every single month. Grand Fee Stones type will change uh, and, and reset after each season. You will not be able to carry stones over to the next season or year. And for available characters from the Grand Fee Sugo Fest, you see the notice. So... Uh, personally i'm getting a bit more used to how this is exactly working um but we can go through all these images because some of these images are, are a bit different here uh certain characters will be powered up uh during each event and it will also change the likelihood of certain enemies to appear so this is interesting as well right so they give an example here psi free spirit and fighter stats are increased but then it says int appearance up so also just by owning trusty characters you will add more items when you clear the quest so Yep, with everything, uh, there is going to be a trusty character list, and if you use characters that are listed as trusty characters, you do get more rewards, and then I assume if you have those characters with luck stat invested, you get even more drops. We don't even know what kind of drops you get, I assume the co-op medals are going to be included in that. So, we, we, we showed this a little earlier, but we've got the co-op quest and the different stones. Each season, you've got different colored uh, yeah, gemstones. Then, we have the skip button. So, while you're playing co-op quest, you can literally just press a skip button and let your 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 partner perform the actions instead. You can pass a turn to your partner while, not, while uh, not missing a turn. Use the skip button when you need your partner to beat the enemy for you. I think this is a very good idea. Because there were some times when you were playing the trial quest where you have a certain special that can only get through um, like the certain enemy gimmick. Like if you have a special that removes Rainbow Shield and your co-op partner doesn't have a special that gets through Rainbow Shield, if they can just pass it back to you so you can use your special to remove Rainbow Shield, for example, uh, then that would be a good way to get through the content. So I like that there is a button to, to hand it over to your, uh, to your partner to get through it instead. I think that's a really good idea. Next on the agenda, we have uh, a very big image, and this is pretty much all the stuff that we have from the previous, uh, you know, information stuff. Like, it says, if, if any one of the partners fall to zero HP, then you both lose, so you gotta make sure that both uh, you and your partner are performing well. Um, then you have your, your co-op captains are based on the, the styles and, and the class of the characters, so that's gonna uh, determine what kind of effects each character gets. And then how to play the cult quest, um, you, you clear the quest, you get the gemstones, use them on the Grand Feast Sugo Fest. We all pretty much understand that. You got your co-op captain. So this is interesting as well. So you've got the co-op uh, captain, you either reach them to level 150 or you use a co-op tome to unlock their co-op captain, okay? Co-op captains will fight using their co-op captain stats. So it says th this is a defensive style unit. So the co-op special reduces damage taken and heal. Then you have the co-op captain, which boosts the Psy units, and their co-op action gives class-based boost for free spirit and slasher based on this unit. Okay, so they're just taking components of, of a lot of different things. So yeah, the special is based on their rumble style, their captain is based on their color, and then their co-op action is based on their class. Okay, interesting stuff. Uh, power up their co-op captain, so you can power up your co-op captain to take on quests. So it looks like you can use cotton candy, proof of friendship medals, and almighty manuals to increase it. You can power up co-op captains from the co-op quest top screen or the power up menu. 
That's fascinating. So you can use multiple different ways to power up your co-op captain, not just using like a new material, which I think is actually really cool. The luck drop, which we talked about earlier. So we got quest tips here. Um, this is this the repeating of what we had. So that's all really interesting stuff about co-op quest and how this is exactly working. Now, as they said, co-op quest is not actually starting until May 11th, I think it was, or May 12th, like literally the day of the anniversary is when co-op quest will debut for the first time, which I, I I get, but at the same time, I think it would have been cool if we got access to this like pretty soon after the maintenance, just so that we could actually start playing it and give it a bit of a go. But I also kind of understand it as well, because there's going to be a lot of things to do. Uh, we do know that, you know, we've got Kazuna Clash coming up, and then we've got the next PKA season about to start, and then we're, we're going to have the anniversary, uh, obviously, right in the middle of May, and then we've got, you know, new stuff in regards to that. So there's lots to look forward to, lots of stuff happening here. Uh, there are just a couple more things that I wanted to talk about before we wrap up this video. Uh, this one was listed here by, by Brandon as well. He titles this as a new summon animation, where we've got some of the different straw hats here. Now, I don't know, I mean, again, we don't really have a lot of information here. This could literally just be for the Grand Feast Sugo Fest, and I think that would make sense because they're all literally feasting, uh, and they're all cheering with with their uh, with their beers. So I could definitely see this being a thing for the Grand Feast Sugo Fest, but I also hope that this is exactly for normal Sugo Fest as well. Spicing up the summon animations is always a good thing. It's always exciting to see stuff like that. Like when they first introduced the Gear Five animations, that was insanely hype. But this also leads me to think, like, if they're bringing this new summon animation for this update for the anniversary, like, are we gonna, get, are we about to get another Straw Hat Crew Legend for anniversary? I mean, for 10th anniversary, getting a new legend focusing on all the Straw Hats together, I kind of understand that. I hope that's not the case, because it's kind of annoying to team build for characters such as that, but at the same time, I think it would be quite fitting for 10th anniversary. We'll have to wait and see exactly. So shout out to uh, Brandon and Captain Pabby for compiling this information here. So Brandon mentions during the Grand Feast ranking, this is the ranking of um, each of the characters. So if you have a character that is a four star rare, they're only worth 1000 points. Five star rares are 2000. Sugo rare five star, we have 5000 points. Then we have this Grand Feast Sugo Fest only five star. So this is, it looks like it's not even gonna be a legend character. It's just gonna be like a generic gold poster character, five star character. 6,000 points, but then if you get a Sugofest exclusive in their 6-star form, then it's 7,000 points, because the chances to pull a character in its 6-star form is astronomically low compared to, you know, pulling their 5-star form, so I, I kind of get it, so this means that if you pull, like, if you do a multi on this, and you get a, if you get a multi that has, like, a, a character that is a 6-star legend character, fully evolved form, that's actually really good, and it's it's worth a lot. If you end up pulling the Grand Feast Legend-only character, or the Grand Feast Sugo-only character, that's going to be really good too in the ranking system. So, there's that. Uh, there's also this as well, the Co-op Tomes. Now, when we saw the Co-op Tomes, I was thinking, okay, it's going to be a new generic item you feed to a character to get access to Co-op Captain, Co-op Special, etc. However, from what we can see here is that there is a Co-op Tome for each individual color and rarity. So, we have one for every color of, uh, like, normal rare recruit characters, but then there's also Sugofest exclusive Co-op Tomes as well for each individual color, very similar to the Wanted posters, how we have, like, the red ticket Wanted posters for each color, We've got the gold poster ones for each color. So that's a little frustrating. I kind of wished it was just a generic tome that you could use on anyone. But unfortunately, that is not the case. So I wanted to give that a little bit of information to you guys too. And then this was also interesting. We get a little bit more information in regards to action specials, which is the new anniversary component, new mechanic, new gimmick that is coming for certain characters in the anniversary. So... There will be a tap timing moment during the special visual effect, so you actually have to watch the special animation is what it seems like. Succeed the tap to unleash a powerful effect. There are tap timings of good, great, perfect, and even excellent. Succeed the taps to raise the score, higher the score, better the effect. We move on to the next image here. There's different tap types. So you've got just a normal tap, tap at the right moment when the circle matches, the final tap will add double the score. 
Then you have a swiping action. Swipe at the right moment towards the marked direction when the circle matches. But there's also a hold function. Tap and hold at the right moment when the circle matches. Release the hold when the circle is at max. So it looks like it's an interactive special animation. And I think this is really cool. And depending on what type of characters that they apply with this, this could be a super cool way to abuse this mechanic. And if you have to like sit through a certain special animation and you're actually interacting with it, it's going to make it a lot more fun to play with. Uh, as long as this is not a type of effect that you have to perform in the middle of your tap timings, because that's already kind of annoying to do like Rush, Super Tandem and all Final Tap. To, to do that in the right order, it can be a little frustrating sometimes. Uh, but if this is like one of these things before you do your taps, you perform this little action with the special animation, it sounds really interesting. I'm all for it. It sounds really, really cool. And then we have this, skip slash auto resolve. So you can actually just straight up skip it altogether if you don't want to do it. When using the skip during the action special setting, the option setting to auto resolve action specials or skipping a special visual effect due to the once per day skip. So this is very similar to what they brought out with these new animations. You could just skip the animations altogether if you want. Um, it's going to resolve with the following chances. So there are different chances that can occur here. You've got a miss, good, great, perfect, or excellent with varying different factors. You got the highest chance for great and perfect, but there are opportunities that if you just auto skip it, there are things where you could just straight up miss it and not get any effect out of it. So if you want to get the best out of it, you should just play it yourself. But if you don't want to, then you, you can just let it do its own thing, right? When set to auto resolve, tap effects will disappear, enabling to see the entire special visual effect. Now, in this little image here, we're trying to get a bit more info out of this, see if we can if we can see anything. But from what I can tell, we have the Sugo, Super Sugo uh, Nico Robin character, and that's all I can see. It looks like we've got a mob character here. Yeah, these are like uh, generic mobs from like uh, the first story mode, right? But we see Nico Robin, and that's kind of it. We just don't see a lot of info, and I'm not expecting um, that, uh, you know nico robin to appear as a character for anniversary because i mean this is literally the super sugo final tap robin a little bit of a weird one uh, and finally the last thing i wanted to talk about in this video is chopper man missions in regards to co-op quest so there's uh when i saw this i was kind of excited because this gives me uh vibes of like garp challenges right so we've got click co-op quest one time you get your your, your grand feast stone clear the captain difficulty one time so you got different rarities you got apprentice captain warlord emperor king of the pirates and infinitum c so these are the different uh difficulties of the co-op quest and you get bounty and stones but then you got clear the apprentice one time with a player bounty of 10 million or less that's actually gonna be pretty difficult you have to find someone that has really low bounty okay sure only applies for clearing with a partner that cleared for the first time okay uh, clear co-op quest captain with a low bounty, clear warlord with a low bounty, but then it says clear warlord with int, emperor with int, infinity mc with, with int, and then you've got clear infinitum c with int fighter or int powerhouse characters, then warlord with psi, emperor with psi, king of the pirates with psi, and then infinitum c with psi cerebral or psi slasher, warlord with dex, emperor with dex, infinitum c with dex, and then you got Dex Shooter or Dex Free Spirit. So I wonder if this has a little bit of a hint as to what we might see for Anniversary. Now, the interesting thing uh, is the Int one, right? Because it's Int Fighter or Int Powerhouse. Now, I want to just pull up the database real quick. The main reason why I think that is so fascinating is because of Vegapunk. Uh, Vegapunk, the new legend Vegapunk, he has a very interesting mechanic in his special that says... If your crew has six int characters, changes class two of class two powerhouse characters to cerebral for one turn. And then we have this one here, which says if you have an int fighter or int powerhouse, you want to build a team around. So are we going to get like an int Luffy character that is fighter powerhouse? And then you can use Vegapunk to change his secondary powerhouse class into cerebral to make that gear five work with the Vegapunk team potentially that's my tinfoil hat theory but then we move on we've got psi cerebral psi slasher so a slasher cerebral that is a psi unit i don't know and then we've got a deck shooter or free spirit well when i think of shooter free spirit i immediately think of uh port guards d ace so that's that's what i think but for for cerebral slasher that could be a lot of different things it really could so i, I don't know what that could be referring to i don't know th these this could just be random class type combinations that they brought up or this could have to do with the anniversary characters that's coming up i don't know but but cerebral slasher and also being psi 
I don't even know, dude. Like, Psy, Slasher, Cerebral, exclude from others. I guess Rayleigh makes sense, but I, I don't think we'd get a Rayleigh. Shanks could make sense. Um, Mihawk, potentially. Mihawk would be kind of weird, though. Uh, Shanks does make a lot of sense. That's the one that keeps popping up. Toshigi, yeah, probably not. Dogstorm, probably not <laughs> for Anniversary. Um, but yeah, uh, Trafalgar Law is a good choice, too. It could definitely be Trafalgar Law. Rayleigh keeps popping up. Hiyori... Uh, yeah, so I don't know. There's lo there's lots of different characters that it could be, but just kind of interesting. You got Deck Shooter, Free Spirit, Psy Cerebral Slasher, Int Fighter Powerhouse. We'll see what that's all about. But it was a very long video, but I wanted to give this info for you guys because there's just so much going on, and uh, I wanted to make sure you guys knew exactly what was happening. Um, right before the maintenance period that's happening so hopefully you enjoyed this video though and if you did enjoy it make sure to go ahead and leave a like shout out to brandon shout out to pappy for compiling the information if you did enjoy the video make sure to go ahead and leave a like and if you want to stay up to date with all the content i post including more one piece treasure cruise content make sure to hit the subscribe button down below i'm that guys i'll see you guys within the next video